report. Um, some of the other emails from Dr. Morenz, I just want to read into the record and ask you if his recollection is accurate. On April 27th, 2020, Dr. Morenz wrote, I am sure privately he would love to see Peter and EcoHealth fully restored, although he did once make the comment to me that Peter had screwed himself with the late report. I already told him that all that crap wasn't true. The late report was true, despite what Dr. Morenz said. On April 21st, 2021, Dr. Morenz wrote that he was sure you would do anything you could to restore the funds to EcoHealth. On June 5th, 2021, Dr. Morenz wrote that you were working behind the scenes to undo the damage to EcoHealth. On October 21st, 2021, Dr. Morenz wrote, Peter, I had my regular meeting with Tony this morning. He immediately inquired about you and several times asked how you were doing. He used a lot of colorful language about the situation with attacks on EcoHealth. On October 25th, 2021, Dr. Morenz wrote that you were trying to protect EcoHealth. On March 22nd, 2021, Dr. Morenz wrote, the most important is within NIH to get the decision reversed and the grant refunded. I believe Tony would like to do this. And on February 24th, 2022, Dr. Morenz wrote, it will be a small consolation to hear the following, but in my face-to-face -face meeting with Tony this morning, he once again brought up, as he usually does, your plight, Peter. Did you ever have any discussions with Dr. Morenz about protecting EcoHealth or helping restore funding? Not at all. I don't know what, I, to be honest with you, Mitch, I just don't know what Dr. Morenz is talking about with that. Maybe he's trying to, as he said, cheer up. He said that in front of this mm -hmm. committee, cheer up Dr. Dasik. But to say that I'm getting involved in trying to help him or protect him, not so. Did you ever have any conversations with Dr. Morenz about what Dr. Dasik was facing or about the termination of the grant? You know, I may, he may have mentioned to me something like Dr. Dasik is going through a terrible times, uh, but I don't recall. It. it is conceivable that he would have mentioned that to me because, as he mentioned to you, that Dr. Dasik and he are very good friends. So it would not be surprising if sometime he had mentioned to me, boy, Dr. Dasik's going through some really tough times. Fine, that doesn't mean that I say no. you should help him. No, absolutely doesn't. So that's why we want to ask the questions and yes. get, get, get the answers. Um, during your transcript interview with us, uh, you were asked about whether or not Dr. Dazic had a conflict of interest in reviewing the origins of COVID-19. And you testified, you know, I hesitate to speculate about someone else should, what someone else should do. The only people that I am involved with is my own staff, who we've mentioned many times in this discussion, who don't have a conflict of interest. With the benefit of hindsight and the work of this committee, do you believe Dr. Morenz had a conflict of interest regarding EcoHealth? Well, from what we know now, he definitely had a conflict because he was communicating with a grantee of helping him in response to an NIH issue, which is a conflict of interest. I did not know that at the time when I made your statement. And I appreciate that. That's, yeah. um, sticking with EcoHealth, in April 2020, NIH terminated and then subsequently reinstated and then suspended the EcoHealth grant that had the Wuhan Institute as a sub-grantee. Do you recall that decision? Yes. Were you involved at all in that decision? No. Uh, you previously testified to House Energy and Commerce that you were, in essence, told to cancel the grant. Do you recall who told you? Um, we got it from a, a number of now, retrospectively, we found out how it was. It was the White House told the department to tell the NIH to cancel the grant. Um, did you agree with the cancellation? What is that? Do we need to listen to that? Okay. He, 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 was, he, he was escorted out. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I'm sorry. Repeat the question, Mitch. Did you agree with the cancellation? You know, I, I, it wasn't a question of agreeing or disagreeing. It was like, can we really do that? <laughs> I don't think that you can do that. And as it turned out, I was right, <laughs> because the general counsel of HHS said, by the way, you can't do that. You've got to restore the grant. And that's why they restored it and then suspended it pending the yes, compliance review. Exactly. Um, not to keep reading Dr. Morenz's emails, but on June 24th, 2020, Dr. Morenz wrote an email he, referencing you, made some additional comments to the effect that this came from the White House and he was totally opposed to it. You weren't totally opposed to it? It's, well, see, that's his, you know, he's doing a lot of interpretation, Mitch. His interpretation, I was totally opposed to it. It was more of 
can we really legally do that? And the answer turned out, I was right. No, you can't. Um, do you recall, the, did the department ask you first or Dr. Collins first to terminate? I think it right? went directly to Building 10, uh, excuse me, Building 1, the, the director's is, office. Is that the NIH director's yeah, office? Yeah, I think it, w it went from the department to NIH to us. Okay. Um, were you, prior to your retirement in December of 2022, were you involved in any of the compliance actions NIH took against EcoHealth? I don't believe so. I think the, the actual, and, and again, I'm, I'm a little unclear about the time, but I think most of the disciplinary actions actually occurred after I left, if I'm not mistaken. The, yes, the actual suspension and debarment occurred after you left, but there were a number of letters requesting lab notebooks or further information yeah, while I, you were yeah. still there. Uh, what happened, Mitch, and it's important to point this out, once it was clear that there was compliance issues while I was still there, we were told at NIAID, stay out of it. Compliance is going to be handled by Building One, i.e., the NIH director and Mike Lauer. So the compliance was said, don't touch it, don't go near it, just we'll take care of it. And you just brought this up since the original termination, then suspension, NIH found numerous major violations of grant policies, has since debarred the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and suspended and proposed for debarment both EcoHealth as an institution and Dr. Dazic individually. Are you aware of those? Yes, I am. Um, during previous TIs and hearings, when asked if they supported every one of these actions and supported the suspension and debarment, uh, both Dr. Collins and Dr. Tabak said yes. Sitting here today, do you support the suspension and debarment of EcoHealth? Yes. I want to move on to the kind of like known unknowns of COVID origins to quote Dr. Lipkin's paper from early 2020. Um, on October 20th, 2021, Dr. Tabak sent a letter to uh, then ranking member Mr. Comer that said the bat coronaviruses studied under the EcoHealth Alliance grant could not have been the source of SARS-CoV-2 and the COVID-19 pandemic. You've testified similarly both back in January and today. Um, some of the things that uh, I believe Chairman Griffith brought up was just kind of that statement results on some things, rests on some things that we just can't know. Um, in your experience, Dr. Fauci, do researchers uh, publish every virus that they sequence? No, I mean, uh, uh, I think researchers don't always publish every single thing they do. Um, do they routinely publish every experiment that they conduct? Uh, I'm sure there are people who don't publish every single experiment that they do. And then is there a lag time between the sampling, the analysis, and the publication? Yeah, I mean, publications often take months before they come out. Is it possible, if not plausible, that EcoHealth and the Wuhan Institute of Virology have samples from between 2020 when they originally published a paper, or excuse me, 2015 when they originally published a paper with all of their samples and now that are unpublished? Sure, it's possible, but Mitch, I'm, I'm, I might just throw in there, you can't get away from the fact that the viruses that were studied, that we that the NIH gave them a grant to study. Don't pull back on the fact that no matter what you did with those viruses, they were phylogenetically so different, they could not possibly be the precursor of SARS-CoV-2. And, and I agree with that. I guess my only point is that you don't know all the viruses they were working with. Yeah, and let's make that clear because uh, Griffith, uh, Congressman Griffith asked it, and I answered you quite honestly that none of us can know everything that's going on in China or in Wuhan or what have you. And that's the reason why I say today, and I've said at the TI, I keep an open mind as to what the origin is. Um, the last thing.